Cruise news time. We've got cruise ships being floated as an option for the homeless and for asylum-seeking migrants, folks that have crossed the U.S. from the southern border. P&O Arvia making its debut in a different part of the world. We also have a, a Disney announcement, 25 years in the making. Carnival Cruise Ship has a cruise to nowhere. And while there's a major cruise line expanding their casinos. That's a cool story. I can't wait to share this one with you. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your Friday, January the 20th. Wink, wink. January the 20th, 2023. I think yesterday I said it was January the 20th. I checked the calendar today. I'm pretty sure today is January the 20th. Cut me some slack, y'all. I've just been back in this hemisphere for five days, and I've been getting my butt kicked. I was a week behind on school when I got here, and so I've spent every waking moment beyond making videos, reading academic books, textbooks, I haven't used the dictionary this much in five years when I did this previously. And uh, man, I had my class last night. I was up at 3.30 a.m. last night, unable to sleep, maybe jet lag, something like that. I finally took a couple melatonin gummies. And well, I, I just woke up and I'm groggy as heck. Um, man, I hope everything, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. But the cruise news marches on. Cruise news story. Number one is an interesting one. I've got two stories from different places in the world, two communities that are talking about using cruise ships uh, to shelter homeless folks in one spot and to shelter migrant asylum seekers, people that have crossed the southern border of the United States in another spot. And then we've got some heavy opposition to it. And while the heavy opposition... Well, wait, wait till you hear who it is. First, we've got a story coming out of the UK where at a December meeting, Councilman David Brenton put forth an idea that to address their homeless problem, they have around 4,000 homeless people, that they could use a cruise ship to do that. And interestingly, the opposition raised their hand and said, you can't put homeless people on a cruise ship. It would be like putting them in prison conditions. Now, I've been on several cruise ships, and I've never thought of one as a prison. But guess who the opposition is to this? The opposition to this are the people that are in charge of the shelters in that region. So these are the people that their whole life is taking care of homeless people, of working the shelter system to make sure that people have a place to sleep and eat, all kinds. So it, you would think it might be somebody that was just against homelessness. or These are people that work with homeless people saying that you cannot put them on a cruise ship because it's prison-like conditions. Of course, there's a pushback from the councilman saying, are you crazy that this is not prison-like conditions? But I found that interesting. And then just out today, Mayor Adams in New York City. New York City is struggling with a, a migrant problem because if, if you've been following along with this, there's been a heavy amount of people crossing the southern border in border states like Texas. And then they've been shipped to New York City. They've been bussed up to New York City. New York City, an asylum city, they are struggling with a, a lot of people. They're struggling with so many people seeking asylum that they're looking for a variety of ways to deal with these people. And one of the ideas being floated out by the mayor in New York City is to commission cruise ships and put these people that are seeking asylum on the cruise ship. Well, guess who's in opposition to it there also? It is the Legal Aid Society, which serves as a watchdog for the city's right to shelter law. Uh, they said that it's flawed. To state the obvious, cruise ships are not designed or equipped to provide adequate long-term shelter and services to homeless people, including asylum seekers, and are unlikely to comply with well-established court orders and local laws governing New York's right to shelter. So it's interesting where the opposition is coming from when it comes to using cruise ships for housing the homeless and housing migrants. Uh, but yeah, look, the New York thing is something that's been floated a couple times. It, it probably won't come to fruition. And I think while it's a nice lofty idea that cruise ships can be used this way, 
Personally, I kind of hope that they continue to be used for their regular purpose, taking people on holidays. Uh, certainly, we've got to tackle the homelessness problem. we got to tackle the migrant asylum-seeking problem. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure that this is really the spot for cruise ships to play. I know that uh, when it came to refugees from Ukraine, the cruise ships were used successfully in the Netherlands to take care of refugees. So it's certainly possible but it does seem like a stretch when you've got 40,000 people that you have to house, uh, you know, to throw a couple 2,000 to 6,000 passenger cruise ships at it. Will it really solve the problem? Will it be enough to make a dent? I don't know. Uh, we'll follow this as it goes along. But pretty wild that the main opposition uh, actually coming from people that are in charge of the sheltering or look over the sheltering, uh, saying that cruise ships are not, not necessarily what is needed. Cruise news story number two. I've got to circle back around to, I think about a week ago, there was a Carnival cruise ship making its normal cruise from South Carolina to the Bahamas when all of a sudden a terrible wind uh, came up and they were unable to dock in the Bahamas. And well, that was the only cruise port for the Carnival Sunshine. And because that was the only cruise port and they could not dock in the Bahamas, they had to get an approval to do a cruise to nowhere. Cruise to nowhere, not as frequent as it used to be. It used to be a common occurrence until uh, somebody got upset over a casino boat that wanted to do cruises to nowhere and the enforcement really went into full swing, not allowing cruise ships to just leave a U.S. port and return to the same U.S. port without making a foreign stop. But it does happen in certain circumstance. Cruise lines do have to reach out and get an exemption for when they cannot stop at a foreign port. And that is what happened with the Carnival Sunshine just last week. My very first cruise was actually a cruise to nowhere because of propulsion issues. Unable to go to Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, we thought we were just going to stay out in the ocean. We eventually went to Key West, but that still didn't satisfy the going to a foreign port. So my very first cruise was a, an exempted cruise to nowhere. So I certainly understand what the people on the Sunshine went through. I like a bunch of sea days. So while it's probably a bummer for some on that cruise, the 3,000 passengers... It was a short cruise. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, there were a lot of people that weren't too bummed out missing Nassau. Would you be bummed out to miss Nassau on your four-day cruise from Charleston? Uh, were you on that cruise ship? Leave a comment below. Cruise news story number three. Disney Cruise Line making an announcement, a big announcement, 25 years in the making that they have a brand new fireworks show coming out for their cruise ships. And if you were unawares, Disney Cruise Line has a fireworks show off of their cruise ships. I saw it firsthand when I cruised on the Disney Magic during the Marvel Day at Sea. It was pretty cool. Part of the big Marvel show included a fireworks display, and uh, I like fireworks, so it was really cool to see fireworks off the cruise ship. Here's the announcement from Disney. Created in honor of Disney Cruise Line's 25th anniversary, the limited-time evening extravaganza will hold up the cherished Disney tradition of fireworks and honor Disney's continuing legacy of adventure. The dazzling spectacle will be set to the tunes of iconic and beloved Disney music, and anchoring the show will be a brand new signature song created especially for the Silver Anniversary at Sea. The new 25th anniversary show will take place on most Bahamian, Caribbean, Mediterranean cruises that are scheduled for summer 2023. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, ha happy anniversary. There you go. Uh, are you cruising on Disney during this silver anniversary? Are you looking forward to the new fireworks show? Are you wishing upon a star? Any of those things, all those things, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Leave a comment below. Now, I've got a couple more cruise news stories for you, including the cruise line that is expanding their casinos. I could be a little excited about that. Also, I got to talk to you about P&O, but before I get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. Wait, that's the wrong. We don't do that. Let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with a notification bell. Sorry, guys. It's Friday. I hope everybody's having a kick butt Friday. Cruising. Please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. We got a lot of new subscribers yesterday. Uh, I put out the call and you guys responded. Welcome to the family. Welcome back. Welcome to the local fam, y'all. 
good to have you. Virtual hugs. <laughs> Virtual hugs. Um, yeah. Are you part of the notification squad? You got that bell rung? Ring my bell. Ring my bell. My bell. All right. P&O Arvia, or as us who are pirately inclined, PRV, PRV, P&O Arvia, Arvia, the first cruise ship with an Arby's at sea. I'm just kidding. There's been many cruise ships with Arby's at sea. There's no Arby's. Uh, it's a it's a UK line P&O, and they have uh, it's the newest cruise ship for P&O. It's a LNG cruise ship. It's a big old mamma jamma. She's a bad mamma jamma. And while she's left the UK and made her way to Antigua and Barbados, uh, she will be doing 14 day sailings around the Caribbean. You got to fly down there to get there. The, again, the P&O focus primarily at the UK market. But it is nice when these UK cruise ships go and explore the Caribbean. P&O Arvia now doing its Caribbean sailings until April when she will reposition back to the UK to start doing Mediterranean cruises. Anybody out there sailed on P&O in the UK? Uh, what do you think it would be like for an American to sail on P&O out of the UK? Would it be wild? Maybe so. Leave a comment below. All right, now let's talk about the cruise line that is expanding their casino. I think they're doing it specifically for me. I just came off of my very first Holland America line cruise, and I'm still working on the review of that cruise to tell you the things that I learned about Holland America line. I, I've got to answer the question, was I too young to go on Holland America line? But I can give you this little... I can give you this little insight. One of my favorite aspects of Holland America Line was the casino. Uh, that shouldn't be too shocking to anybody. One of the big takeaways in my mind is that if you are a casino player, if you like going to cruise to go to the casino, uh, the vibe on Holland America when it comes to the gambling was good. I was even telling the lovely Jenny B, we've got to look and see if there's some Holland America sailing from Florida, something that we can do pretty easily because I would love for her to get on board and see that vibe. The news just coming out that Holland America Line has decided to expand the size of their casino on some of their largest and newest cruise ships. The casino change will impact five cruise ships. There will be increased casino space on the Pinnacle and Signature class of cruise ships. Uh, this includes the Rotterdam, which is their new cruise ship, New Stadendam, Koningsdam, Eurodam, New Amsterdam. And what they're going to do is they're going to be adding more slot machines and more video poker machines. In a statement from Daniel uh, Materassi, He's the Senior Vice President of Guest Commerce and Performance Analytics. Imagine the Guest Commerce and Performance Analytics having something to say about the casino. He said that the casino play is a key part of their Holland America Line cruise vacation for many of our guests. And we were able to take advantage of some extra space on the Pinnacle class ships to add more gaming machines. The slots we've added are some of the newest in the industry, bringing exciting gameplay to our guests alongside the popular classic machines. And look, that statement itself brings up uh, interesting questions. I love the fact that the guy that they're putting out in front of the casino expansion is the guy that looks at the analytics and that he's in charge of, of tracking commerce. Because the slot machines are a money-making endeavor for any casino. But what he said there is that they're putting out some new slot machines. Slot players, let me ask you this question. Do you guys like the licensed branded slots over the non-branded slots? So on the uh, Nordam, they had a Spider-Man slot. And I never played the slots, but because it was a Spider-Man slot, I did throw some money into the Spider-Man slots. I like the Spider-Man, the Willy Wonka. I like the Jurassic Park. I like the Jumanji. But I'm not a big fan of just the kind of nondescript slots that I don't really know anything about. Like, I don't have a connection to the license. As a slot player, do you find that you win more or less on a licensed or non-licensed slot machine? Uh, and do you, does this appeal to you that there might be some brand new slot machines on the casino there on Holland America Line? Uh, interesting gambling questions. I'll leave a comment below. Now let me let me say this. My brain is just exploding. I just I got keyed into a new idea yesterday called transpersonal leadership and transpersonal psychology. And those are just fancy words that basically talk about being able to transcend our normal selves and experience a higher level of life. 
Uh, some of the examples are that feeling that you get when you see your child being born, that feeling that you get when you see a sunrise or a sunset, that feeling that you get when you look at the ocean, that awe and majesty that you feel. I think all of us have felt that. I didn't even realize there was a study about that. Some, some idea that you can achieve those higher levels of feelings uh, through different kind of practices. Transpersonal psychology and transpersonal leadership – this may become a new passion of mine because I surely, I surely enjoy those feelings that we talked about. Wouldn't it be wild if you could do something to access those feelings more frequently? Hmm. Again, my brain's popping here, guys. I'm learning a lot. And I like it. I like it. But I don't know that I was ready for the influx of new ideas uh, to commingle with the old ideas. Uh, and then you throw the melatonin on top of that. It's trippy. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having a pretty trippy Friday, and I've got to do some writing. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys are ready for a great weekend. We're less than a week from leaving to go on our next cruise, and uh, that's that's what's going on here at La Lida Loca headquarters. Uh, uh, yeah. Leave some comments. Hit the like button. Watch this next video. This is Tony for La Lida Loca on uh, Friday the 20th. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.